Most passengers believe that when the oxygen masks fall from the ceiling on an aircraft, you're breathing oxygen from an oxygen tank. But really, it's chemically generated oxygen. It's fake oxygen. Are you joking with me right now? I'll explain it all. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 74 Gear is all about aviation. Today I'm sitting in a general aviation aircraft. I actually finished my transition training on this Cirrus a little bit early. I had a little extra time on the ground and I needed to make a new video for you. So here I am recording this and this is a view from the airplane here instead of a hotel. This is a view of the Santa Monica airport. Now before you write your local government officials complaining about how they can give you chemically generated oxygen in an aircraft It's too late for that! Let me explain to you why I believe the engineers designed it this way. Let's get into it. Now there are three main reasons why I think the engineers designed it this way. First, if you put oxygen tanks above the seat, you'd be using that overhead compartment that you use for your carry-on luggage or anything like that. It would be eating up all that space. Second, oxygen tanks leak. The oxygen tanks that the pilots use are actually oxygen tanks and those are continually having to get refilled. One, because we use them sometimes, but two, because oxygen is going to leak out of those tanks. Which means that if you had oxygen tanks through all the planes, you'd have to have multiple oxygen tanks and the maintenance crews would have to continually be checking and refilling all those oxygen tanks, which would be very time consuming. And three, those oxygen tanks are very heavy. So that's going to add to the overall weight of the aircraft, making it a lot heavier to fly, and it's gonna make it a lot less fuel efficient. So those are the three main reasons why I think the engineers actually created it without having oxygen tanks. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the pilots up front do have oxygen tanks, and for a few different reasons. One, there are scenarios in flight which we are required to wear the oxygen tank. For example, if the other pilot leaves to go to the bathroom, we are required to wear the oxygen tank. Another scenario in which a pilot is required to wear the oxygen mask is above a certain altitude. At certain altitudes, it is required that at least one pilot is wearing oxygen mask at all time. And as you can imagine, the oxygen mask is not super comfortable, which means the first officer is gonna be wearing the oxygen mask. So usually, the pilots are trying to stay below that altitude in the US, it's 41,000. They're trying to stay below that altitude so that way neither the pilot has to have the oxygen mask on. So for that reason, the pilots need to have oxygen that they can always use and is much longer duration because we may be using it throughout the flight when passengers are typically not using it. The passenger oxygen setup is different. It is a one-time use only, so that would not work for the pilots. Here's how the oxygen mask works for you as a passenger. You always know that the flight attendants say when the oxygen mask comes down to tug on it. The reason that the flight attendants tell you to tug on it is because that initiates a packet which starts heating up the chemicals. That tug is very important. When you pull that tug, it releases a pin and that starts the heating of the chemicals, which is what formulates the oxygen. Now, luckily, I have a master's degree in chemistry. That is a lie! There are different chemical compounds that are used to create oxygen, but three common ones are sodium chlorate mixed with barium peroxide and potassium, some word I can't even pronounce. You are a huge disappointment. Now, once these chemical compounds have actually started mixing, you're gonna have about 12 to 15 minutes of oxygen, which is more than enough time for your pilot to get to an altitude where you can breathe comfortably. That's usually gonna be between 10 to 15,000 feet. So the pilots are gonna immediately get the aircraft at to that altitude, so that way you can breathe when your oxygen supply runs out. Now, there are a couple things that are very important that you're aware of in the event that this does happen to you. First, when those chemicals start to mix, it's going to create a very bad odor throughout the entire aircraft. The second thing is that chemical reaction is gonna put off a lot of heat. There have been instances where the smell and the smoke and the heat have created an idea to the pilots in the past that there was some type of a fire back there. So it's important that you as a passenger or you as a pilot understand that in the event that those masks drop down, it's going to smell bad, it's gonna smell like chemicals, it's going to heat up, and all those things are gonna be a normal thing in the event of an oxygen mask deployment. And like I said, I know a lot of people are gonna be concerned 12 to 15 minutes, that's not enough time, what if my oxygen runs out? But your pilots are gonna be able to get their aircraft to go down at a very steep descent rate which is going to allow you to get to an altitude where you can breathe without your oxygen mask. And we do a lot of training for this, so it's not something that you need to be concerned about. 
Now what happens if your mask drops down and the oxygen doesn't start coming out? And I know that doesn't mean the bag inflating, but if your oxygen doesn't start flowing, what happens? Can that happen? Most aircraft actually have a design where they're on one side of the aircraft or the other is an extra oxygen mask. And that oxygen mask is designed specifically for if someone has a lap child. So you will notice if you're boarding an aircraft and you see a man or a woman sitting with a baby on their lap, not in a seat, but on their lap, they will be sitting on the side of the aircraft, hopefully, that has the oxygen mask or the backup oxygen mask on that side. So as an example, all the seats on that side of the aircraft, let's say there's three, there will be four oxygen masks on that entire side of the aircraft. So if you're sitting on that side and you see four masks drop out and there's only three seats, that's the reason. So here is my advice if the oxygen mask does fall down. One, don't forget to pull and activate the oxygen pin. That is very important. Without that, you're not gonna be getting any oxygen. And two, the oxygen mask is over your mouth so that way you can breathe. What's very important once that is over your mouth is to be quiet. Listen to the announcements that happen from your flight attendants and your pilots on the flight deck. They are going to tell you exactly what you need to know but don't be yelling and screaming because it's very important that you listen to their instructions. They're going to be getting to you as soon as they possibly can. Obviously, if that happens in flight, your pilots are gonna be busy first getting the aircraft to an altitude where you can breathe. After that is all squared away, they will be coming and making an announcement to let you know exactly what's going on. So it's important, put that mask on and just be quiet and listen for the announcements. And remember, we are gonna be doing our very best to get down as quickly and safely as possible and get us on the ground. We don't have an ejection seat. It's not like this plane, which I'm in right now, which has a parachute. There is no parachute on a commercial aircraft. Now, if you ever wondered, are pilots scared when we're flying? I'll put a link to it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.